So when we talk about loudspeakers, we generally talk about boxes, speakers that hang in our facilities. And we generally refer to them as a single device, although they're made up of components. They have parts in them. They have a speaker that's designed for the lower frequency of the, of the vocal range, and they have a speaker designed for the higher frequencies of the vocal range, at minimum. And that's because the way that cone-shaped loudspeakers produce sound, because of their size, uh, their size has to do with the type of frequencies that they can produce. Well, the human hearing generally can hear 20 hertz to up around 15 or 20,000 kilohertz, and a single cone loudspeaker can't do that. We need a big one for the low frequencies and a little one for the high frequencies. And so there's this device inside the speaker called a crossover that basically listens to the incoming content, whether it's music or um, speech, and says, okay, all the frequencies below that number go to this speaker, like the woofer, and all the frequencies above that number go to this speaker, which is the higher frequency driver. The problem is, where they cross over in the middle, there can create what we call time smear. How that shows up is in clarity and unfortunately where that crossover point happens with most cone loudspeakers is right in the middle of the frequency range where the vocals sit or speech sits or where things like keyboards sit and it affects the the level of affects the quality of the sound dml technology from tectonics doesn't do that it the dml itself has a much higher frequency range so instead of um uh, it, 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 the, the high frequency crossover point does exist, but it's much higher up. It's way above what makes up most of the voice range. Because of that, there's a new level of clarity that's actually rather eye-opening when you listen to it for the first time.